Cody and Robin, I think it's awesome that you guys found each other and just want to be together. I think you should own it and just say that. Well, Jeff, I think you're a victim of 20 hours of our life or just 365 days. Well, listen, we didn't want our family to break up. I know. Isn't that obvious? Well, right, but you're not, be he's not trying to be. Jeff, you're reading too many tablets. Hey, we didn't want this breakup. I didn't want this breakup. I know, but he wasn't being told. I can't tell. Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Thursday, January 25th, 2024. Well, yesterday we did a discussion about Cody Brown and his PR campaign. He is trying to change the narrative of what people think about him in the public. And People Magazine, for whatever reason, is releasing old interviews that they did over a month ago and in September and putting it out as it's brand new. And this whole narrative is that Cody just hopes that he and the wives can forgive each other and that eventually they can all be friends and that he hopes to come to a place of happiness. It's all just TR BS and we'll talk about that. And then there's a new sleuth over at the sun that is continuing to dig into Mary Brown's boyfriend's past and has found an old child support dispute between him and his ex-wife over their daughter, which ended up getting resolved in his favor. And the new tagline is that he is a deadbeat dad that didn't pay child support. We'll do that. And we're going to compare that to Cody's own deadbeatedness and discuss how much credit debt he had when he filed for bankruptcy. And then years later when Christine filed for bankruptcy. So let's dive into today's topic. Before we do, can you make sure to give this video a thumbs up? Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed and click on the bell so you never miss a video. We all know that Cody Brown is likely on the fritz and he is paranoid that he's about to lose his job. And so right now, because there's a lot of negative articles about him, naturally he needs to try to control the narrative by having people put out exclusives. And he is doing his best to play the victim. He, in an article recently called Plural Marriage as Completely Unfair, and it's not about it being unfair to the women, it's about being unfair to him because they can leave and he can't. Now, his nephew, Ben, actually responded to this and on his TikTok and actually responded and said, while technically the guys can't leave their wives, they do leave their wives and the wives basically just get abandoned. So it's more unfair to the women because they end up getting abandoned and they don't have to deal with the women. And yes, women do leave, but women are coerced to joining and end up getting treated like crap by their husbands and the husbands can just acquire more wives and they don't care. Cody wants to make it this about it wasn't fair to him. He said, Janelle, Mary, Christine, even Robin have their choice where, whether they stay in this relationship or not. Now that they've chosen not to be in it, that choice has been made. Then I settle into whatever life continues to give me. And that he said that he felt he could never get out of these relationships. He had different standards for his wives. I always felt like the wives had the opportunity to get out. Technically, our breakups, mining Mary's, mining Christine's, even with all the bitterness and frustration with it, was technically a negotiation. We negotiated a breakup. He loves to say negotiating a breakup. It's the weirdest vocabulary. Christine did not negotiate a breakup with him. She broke up with him. He broke up with Mary. They did not negotiate a, really a breakup. It's He's just trying to find a way to feel like he has control. It's been a very dark time, but I'm moving forward. I'm looking at these women with forgiveness, with love, and with kindness. He's forgiving the women, even though he's the one that did things to them. We're going to be connected for the rest of our lives because of our kids. The best we can do is be kind to each other. He is only doing this because he cannot get to them. They're not talking to him, and he's trying to tell them, you need to stop talking crap about me. That's my opinion. He wants them to stop, quote unquote, trash talking them. 
you can't, he's desperate. He is desperate to find a way to control them, whether it's going to be through the media, whether it's going to be through smear campaigns on the sun, whether it's going to be articles like this, where he's like, we just need to be nice to each other. Uh, Cody, they can do whatever they want. Every one of us is having our own struggle with the reality of this experience. Every one of us is having a struggle with the fact that we have years together and now we're dis dissatisfied enough to say we can't work this out anymore. Oh my goodness. Um, so he was dumped by Christine and Janelle, literally dumped. They have accepted it and moved on. They are repeating what happened because they're on a show with him that he claims is his show and he's not letting them out of. And because they're being honest, he's claiming that that's not being nice. Now, in a perfect world, would they all be on a show in a divorce like this and airing out their dirty laundry? No, but Cody made that decision when he decided to exploit his family for profit. In, in his state of victimhood, he said, it is sad. It's heartbreaking. You're looking for answers in a state of confusion. Once again, the only answer you can make if you want to have a good relationship is moving forward with a lot of charity. Again, he wants them to put back that cloak of charity on and cover for him and stop talking trash about him. He says charity includes giving that forgiveness not only to yourself, but to also all those involved in our differences. There's just no other thing that you can do. We're moving for forward, even though it's separately. How do you do that when you feel such a deep betrayal? And yet my logical mind says, everybody's just looking for happiness here. Everybody's just looking for that space where we're happy. They might not have been happy together. What blessing will it be if we're going to break up? Let's please find happiness after that. But that's a process. Christine is remarried and she has found happiness. Janelle is happy. Mary is happy. He's the only one crying victim here. When the when the, when the women talk about him, they're literally just reacting to his things that he says on the show about them, the lies that he tells about them, and then they speak the truth. And then he again says, you have to express forgiveness. You have to express understanding and hope that at the end of the era for us as a family, we still have a hope of a friendship and a loving or kind relationship with each other in the future because we're all bound forever through our kids. He also says his confidence is coming back. I find the space of grace and love for myself as well, but we're really forgiving of simple things like being angry about what has happened. I want to, my, I want to forgive myself and for that and move on. Also wants them to stop talking about him. Really what Cody's doing is trying to get the wives to shut up. He doesn't want them to say anything. He wants them to give him back the cloak of charity, charity cover up for his misdeeds, stop telling the public how bad of a person he is, stop ruining his perfect image of being a good guy and let him reign supreme in his egotistical world as a perfect man. And if that doesn't work, then he's going to pretend like he's the victim and that he needs to actually forgive them for breaking up with him. Even though he's the reason they broke up with him because he was stringing them along, using them for money, abandoning them, not treating their kids well, uh, taking money from them, taking resources from them, verbally abusing them, psychologically abusing them, just being an overall a-hole and narcissistic mind games. So the narcissist is still crying and trying to control the narrative on um, people. Now he's also doing his best on the other side of the tabloids in the anonymous world where suddenly now the son has court records that prove that Amos didn't pay child support for seven years or 12 years or something. And that because he didn't pay it, his wife had to take him to court to get this paid. However, I want to just put this out there. She, the wife only filed this against him after he filed for a change. It was sort of like a retaliation response. But they're not framing it that right way. They're not framing it in the way that the wife is just doing this because he's already asked for the request. They're framing it as he was the bad guy. All right. So before we dive into what the, the son has to say, this case started in 2000 when Shannon filed for divorce, his ex-wife. They have one daughter named Tiffany. They got married when she was 18 and he was 26 and they had a child two years later. The order of decree went through and they went through, when they got divorced, it was irreconcilable differences. They got split joint custody and over the years, he sent in information for his change of address, for his change of employ employer. He, she, in 2008, had to request that they set up payment 
for his child support. They started garnishing his wages and taking out the back child support that he owed starting in 2009. And in 2013, five years later or four years later, he files a request. They modify child custody because his daughter had been living with him for the past three months. In response to that, she followed filed a modification. So he filed one in June of 2013 and she responded with her own petition to modify custody. They were fighting over that. They had to go to mediation and eventually it was settled. Okay. This is how it's being framed by the son. And I'm not excusing anyone not paying child support, but eventually it all got figured out. So it says he's been accused of refusing to pay child support in a nasty divorce. They were embroiled in a nasty child support battle. At the time of the divorce, the judge awarded both parties the care, custody, and control of the daughter as outlined in the joint parenting plan. Amos was ordered to pay Shannon in the beginning $373 a month in child support beginning in 2001 and lasting until her 18th birthday. Over the course of the next 12 years, his wife claimed that he failed to adhere to the court orders and that, a judge sh- that the judge signed off at the time. By August of 2013, she went back to court to file a petition to modify custody of legal decision-making, parenting time, and child support. She went back to court after he had previously gone back to court in June. She didn't go to court on her own. She went because he went. She said the father did not make consistent child support payments from the divorce until his wages were garnished in 2008. So from 2008 until 2013, he was paying child support. But the time before that, she claims that he wasn't paying. paying. But the court set up a garnishment program where they were going directly into his pay, into his uh, wages. And she says, the seven years of arrears totaled approximately 10000 for which the father now pays only 125 per month through wage garnishment. Father has been difficult to reach and frequently changes his phone number mailing addresses and email addresses without informing the mother sometimes multiple times a year. She explained that all of this is accounted for not being able to collect child support and the request payment for her share of of expenses. She also alleged that he had refused to contribute to the child expenses for daycare, medical, medical, dental, vision, and education for the past 12 years, and that she had paid for every extracurricular school activity, medical appointment, counseling, braces, glasses, and contacts. She informed the court that in addition to paying for expenses for Tiffany, she had also had three other children under the age of 10, and he had filed separately for a modification in in June 2013. So what I'm trying to figure out is why are they giving her story the first angle and then his story the next? Because he filed first. So her filing is a response to his. So he requested that the payments would be stopped in June of 2013 because his daughter was living with him and had been there for three months. He hinted that he was having money problems since she had accused, and he had accused Shannon in an email per the court documents that she had frozen his accounts. She responded to his claim and said, I can assure you that I had nothing to do with your accounts being closed, frozen, or whatever has happened. I'm sorry that you are in a bind right now. So generally when you go to the court for the garnishment, they set up the garnishment, the state, through their child support system. And then the state takes the money directly through their system from the paycheck directly. The the set amount is set up through this through their system based upon whatever his income is at the time. Child support can change based on income. Modifications can happen throughout as income fluctuates. So even though it was originally set at this amount, this is what they set it in 2008 at 125 per month. And she's saying that she still wants all of that money from before, but they're already garnishing his wages for that. Does that make sense? Okay. Anyways, they end up going to a parenting conference in March of 2014. And in exchange for his waiver of his current child support claim against her, she waived her claim against him. That amounted to 10000 and his share of the uninsured medical expenses and child care expenses in the amount of 44.9715. The judge ended up ruling through this, through their mediation, through their conference, that he only ended up having to pay Shannon $404 for the arrears that he had owed. So she said it was $10,000 and the judge said, no, it was 404. 
and he did end up having to pay her for the expenses. So those that money that she had wanted for medical, daycare, whatever, he ends up paying her $4,092 for that. And it says, each parent will provide for the needs of Tiffany while she's in their care, the court ruled, while adding that all, all medical, dental, and other expenses would be equally divided. Then here's the kicker. After they reviewed income between the two of them, and after they looked at the custody and because Tiffany was living with him, she ended up having to pay him money in child support of $158 per month. He was making $3,800 a month and she was making $6,500 a month. So again, it's 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 posted as he's a deadbeat dad, he wasn't paying, he was having his wage, wages garnished, blah, 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 that's all. And at the end of the day, it's kind of a wash and she actually ends up pay, paying him. It would be, it's juicier though when you call him a deadbeat dad. And I, by no means am I saying it's a good thing that he missed those payments and they had to go to wage garnishment, but we have no idea what happened between those years. So anyways, because this they're hell-bent on making Amos look like an a-hole, and I'm not saying he's a perfect man, none of us are, I just wanted to bring something up that Cody is also equally as bad, if not worse, because when he filed for, filed for bankruptcy years ago, when he and Mary, it was 2005. In 2005, he and Mary filed Chapter 7 for liquidation. They had $144,000 of secured debt, meaning these are mortgages and loans, car loans. But they had $85,000 of unsecured debt on credit cards. So he filed for liquidation. He racked up $85,000 worth of credit card debt and walked away from it, screwed the creditors, he also made a promise that he would pay for his mortgage. So they were going to fork, they were going to do the liquidation, but hold on to their house and they were going to continue to pay their monthly payment. Well, they made this promise to the lender that they were going to continue to pay on there and then they stopped paying. And eventually the trustee of their, of their uh, bankruptcy had to file for foreclosure and had to go through the process of hiring a realtor going through the process of selling it, using the money to pay off his creditors and the and his bank because he wasn't paying them back. So not only did he end up screwing over the bank with his foreclosure and not paying back the bank after promising he would, he also screwed all, over all these creditors with the $85,000 worth of debt. And on top of that, he did not claim Christine's children. So he claimed Janelle's kids and Mary's child. He did not claim that he had children with Christine. At the time of this filing, he would have had, I believe, five kids with Christine, but he did not claim them. Four years later, five years later, when Christine filed for, divorce, filed for her own bankruptcy, she claimed those children, and she claimed that she was getting food stamps. She was not, she had very limited income, and I believe she had like $18,000 worth of credit card debt. When Janelle filed for credit card, when Janelle filed for bankruptcy in 1997, she had $16,000 in credit card debt. So Cody ended up bankrupting not only Mary, but he ended up bankrupting Christine and he ended up bankrupting Janelle. He also didn't claim Christine's kids and Christine was using welfare and food stamps to feed her children because he was such a deadbeat dad. Even though on the show, he was publicly saying that he was an amazing dad that provided for everyone. And on top of that, while all of this was happening, he decides to bring in Mary, uh, Robin, who has $30,000 worth of debt, three kids, and he agrees to help her pay off her own that debt, but doesn't help Christine. And then on top of that, Robin is also on food stamps for like the first three or four years of the show. So really, you know, Amos is looking like a better guy here. And I'm not saying he's perfect. But if you want to talk about finances and you want to talk about deadbeat dad, there's no deadbeat dad better than Cody Brown. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye, guys.